Hello friend, welcome back. I am very excited to finally be making my long-term review of the Fujifilm X-H2S. I have used this for about the last year as my A camera and finally kind of getting around to making a long-term review, just letting you guys know my overall thoughts on this camera. I know there are already so many great reviews out there, so I'm just kind of throwing mine in the pot, hoping that it'd be helpful to somebody out there. And so please note today, I'm just gonna be speaking from a video first context. I know this camera is an incredible photo camera, but I'm not really gonna get into that as I have not used this camera primarily for stills. Before we get into the review, just please note, I do have my phone with me here today. I'm gonna to be referencing some notes just because I've jotted down a lot of information about this camera and don't want to leave anything out. So if you see that, just know that that is what I'm looking at and I'm just wanting to do this more long form style. So hope you guys um, enjoy. I intentionally have waited a long time to make this video. I wanted to give myself a lot of time in different environments to really test this camera. And so ultimately, I hope that you would just find this review helpful if you are still considering the X-H2S in 2023. So starting off with how I have used this camera, I've used this camera in interview environments, music videos, live music capture, doc style run and gun filmmaking, indoor and outdoor weddings, travel, and personal videos, YouTube A-roll, and I've also used it with a rig as well as without a rig. The first thing that we're gonna get into is image quality and dynamic range. I think this is one of the most important factors to me in a camera because this is what the end client is gonna see. They are gonna see what the image looks like. And just to get it right out of the way, I really love the look that comes out of this camera. I think the footage looks amazing. I think specifically F-Log2 is really the game changer for me in the X-H2S coming from the X-T3. F-Log1 was good, but I feel like the image when graded out of F-Log2 just looks so good and has transitioned me primarily away from shooting classic chrome. I still do love classic chrome. That is also on my pros list. This is, it is an amazing Rec 709 profile and I still use it regularly, but as I'm finding myself in a lot of scenarios with high dynamic range, um, really bright highlights and deep shadows, I have been shooting F-Log 2 as I've gotten a lot more comfortable grading it this year with my LUTs. The other things that I wanted to talk about in terms of image quality are just the sharpness. This is bothered some people it doesn't really bother me too much as you can take the edge off pretty easily in resolve either with the blur tool or the mid-tone detail the other part of image quality that a lot of people talk about is the high base iso of f-log 2 this has not bothered me too much of course i wish it was lower if we could get it down to 640 that would be amazing but it has not bothered me too much having to shoot at iso 1250 i more recently have been testing out some variable nd filters and that has been super helpful in getting correct exposure as well as motion blur. When it comes to autofocus, this is one of the hot button camera review topics. I'm just gonna say that it's good. It's not perfect, but it's plenty fine for my needs. It has definitely improved with the firmware updates that Fujifilm has provided. And I'm primarily using it in the context where I'm adapting Canon lenses to the Fuji with the Fringer EFX Pro 2 adapter. In adapting lenses, I know that I'm probably not getting the most out of the autofocus, but even then it is still plenty usable. I'm using it right now. I use it on a lot of my talking head A-roll for YouTube and pretty much in all scenarios that I'm shooting professionally. I really trust it. I think the face tracking is great as long as there are not too many faces in the frame, but I think a lot of cameras would struggle with that. I've primarily used it with the Sigma Art 18-35 and 24-70. If you followed me on this channel, you've probably already heard me talk about that. And so I can't really speak to native Fuji lenses and how they perform, but there are some other videos out there, plenty of them, just go watch them. I do think the autofocus is probably even better than what I experienced. So if you guys do have native Fuji glass, I think that's great. Um, I will say face tracking does do a good job, but I often just use the box to set focus. Um, I don't use the multi-mode. I just use the box autofocus where you can use the little trackpad or the touchscreen to just set where you want it to pull focus. This works 90% of the time for me and doesn't really give me a ton of issues. So um, I do have a full video where I talk about lenses and autofocus more in depth. So go watch that if you guys are interested. 
When it comes to IBIS, I do come from the Fuji X-T3. I did not have IBIS, so this is my first camera. I did know that there was sort of a warpy image look on the X-T4 that seems to be fixed. I have not had any issues with the IBIS. I would say that it's really good. It definitely doesn't turn your camera into a gimbal, but it definitely has helped me smooth out handheld shots, especially with the 18 to 35 that does not have image stabilization. I primarily shoot handheld, um, especially for B-roll, and so I feel like the IBIS inside the X-H2S is plenty fine for those use cases, and I don't find myself doing a ton of stabilization in post. When it comes to low light and noise, I think this camera is plenty good. I regularly shoot up to ISO 6400. I know Sony's can push much beyond that, and you definitely can push the Fuji a little bit further, especially in the grade, but I don't love to do a ton of denoising in post, so sometimes in some darker environments, I am pushing up to ISO 640, and I still think the image looks quite good because I'm not the first one to talk about this, but just the noise in the Fuji that is introduced from the ISO looks so good. It looks very similar to film grain. There's been other reviews that have talked about this, but compared to Sony's or even Canon, I do think just Fuji has really nailed their kind of digital ISO, how that adds grain to the image. I honestly think it looks really good as I'm often adding grain to my image anyway. So not a big issue for me. When it comes to record limits and overheating, this has been one of my favorite features, just the fact that Fuji got rid of the record limit. I use this all the time in interview scenarios and it's just so nice to be able to turn my camera on and not have to worry about the 30 minute record limit. Also very helpful at weddings, recording ceremonies that run long. A lot of wedding ceremonies I feel like are right at about 30 minutes long. So if you start a few minutes earlier, um, you know, I've ran into some scenarios with my X-T3 where I'm needing to start and stop really quickly. So really love that. I've had no issues with overheating with this camera. I've used it outdoor, probably not in the most extreme environments. I've definitely used it in the 90 plus Kansas heat, outdoor weddings, as well as B-roll and have not had any overheating issues. I do have the high temp setting turned on and I do not own the external fan that Fuji sells. So if you guys are curious about that, um, I have not had any issues and have run it for well over like two hours straight. When it comes to internal codecs and also external RAW, ProRes files are definitely nice. I think that was a feature that a lot of people talked about in this camera. For me, it doesn't matter a ton. The file sizes are just a little too big, even at the ProRes LT. I find that I still really love just the H.265 10-bit 422 codec, long op, um, just shooting at 200 megabits per second. That has provided me plenty of image quality. I think even 100 megabits per second is plenty fine for YouTube or anything being distributed on social media. So don't have a ton to say about ProRes, but it is nice if you are someone out there who is needing a ProRes workflow or working with editors. It is super nice that this camera can do that. Um, and when it comes to RAW, I don't have any need for RAW in my current workflow. I have no need for having a monitor that records external RAW. So not gonna speak about that. I know there's some other videos out there about RAW, but it is cool that Fuji is making steps in that direction. When it comes to the audio quality, this is something that I was quite excited to talk about. I think the preamps built into the X-H2S have been surprisingly great. They do sell the external XLR handle from Tascam. That would be nice, um, and I've really been tempted to get it, but honestly, I've had no issues using just the eighth inch jack. I have run so many interviews just with the Sennheiser MKE 600 that you're seeing now. XLR cable and then XLR to eighth inch directly into the camera and I've worked with two different audio engineers who have mixed the files and they have made no complaints about the audio quality. I've had them compare the quality of the preamps to like a zoom recorder recording externally and they said that the eighth inch has been plenty fine for the mixes that they're doing. I do think the built-in mic is plenty great for capturing just ambient audio while running and gunning. I've actually gotten away from using an external mic on my camera at weddings. I just find that the mic that's built into the X-H2S is doing a plenty fine job for capturing, you know, laughs, clapping, any just ambient audio that I need of nature. Um, it's been really great. So that has actually made my setup smaller, which I really liked. When it comes to slow motion, I have really enjoyed being able to shoot 4K60 without a crop. The X-T3 did have a crop when shooting 4K60. I've used this at a lot of weddings, as well as kind of dock style B-roll where I'm needing some slow-mo and I really loved that. Um, just that it's not changing the focal length of my lens like the X-T3 would. Um, it does also shoot 120 frames, which I know 
a lot of people get excited about. I don't shoot a ton of 120 frames, so haven't really used it much, but it does. When it comes to the menus, buttons, dials, just the overall layout of this camera, I found it pretty straightforward to navigate for the most part. Really any issues have been solved with a quick Google search, but I think Fuji generally lays out their menus in a way that makes sense. I find them a lot more straightforward than some of the menus from Sony that just seem a little bit more cumbersome and hard to navigate. The custom dials were a big selling point of this camera that a lot of people talked about. I think sitting here a year later, I don't think they're the biggest deal to me. Um, the main reason is because you can't really set global settings. So I wish that you could, you know, lock your aperture, shutter speed, ISO as sort of a global setting and then use the dial to switch between, say, 4K, 6.2K or F-Log2 and your exposure when it changed. Um, I think if Fuji changed that, that would definitely make the custom dials more usable for me. I mainly just use them to change between 6.2K, 4K, F-Log, Classic Chrome. I kind of just have them all in order if you guys want to go watch my X-H2S setup video, um, but that's really the main use case for that for me. When it comes to the menus, I do wish there was a way to send a clean feed when filming in 6.2K over HDMI. You could do this in the X-T3, but basically the X-H2S doesn't give us this feature. That means when I'm sending signal to an external monitor, I'm needing to send all these settings as well, which does kind of decrease the quality. So I wish they would fix that. And I think the big gripe that a ton of people talked about with this camera is the ISO button. You basically couldn't assign this to either the front or the rear dial. And I found a little workaround that you guys can go find in my other video. But yeah, basically they fixed this. You can now use this like other cameras where you can control the shutter speed with one dial and the ISO with the other. Because I'm shooting F-Log2 a lot these days and getting into using ND filters, I honestly am not even touching the ISO that much. So, not a ton to talk about there. I'm usually just leaving it fixed on 1250. So I did just want to transition to talking about some different environments really quickly that I've used the X-H2S in. So the first one is interview environments. I think it's performed really great. Again, the no record limits and great usable audio preamps, I think have made this camera really amazing and has kept the overall size of the camera down for me with not always having to run it with a rig. I find it matches very closely with other Fujifilm cameras and I regularly do shoot it alongside my X-T3 and can match them quite easily. I definitely don't really rely on the autofocus in scenarios like this. If I can't have my eyes on the camera to correct it, the last thing that I would want is to get through a whole take and there was some weird glitch with the autofocus or the lens. And so I always shoot manual focus for interviews. So can't really speak to that, but I think overall I use it in YouTube A-roll and the face tracking does a near perfect job, just kind of depending on the scenario that you put it in. Next environment I wanted to talk about is just run and gun environments. Again, the pros here, I really love the IBIS. It's my first camera that has had IBIS, so I think it's made the amount of stabilization that I have to do in post way less. Great for handheld work, and I think it's been great with and without a rig. I have transitioned from shooting with a rig for weddings to actually going back to shooting without a rig. Um, as I'm shooting Super 8 film at the same time, it is quite hard to hold the X-H2S with the rig and my Super 8 camera. So I've gone back to shooting just without a rig. I think it's been great. I think the flip out screen, I can expose well enough with the exposure tools built in and have not needed it, but have also really loved using this camera with a rig. I think the only thing when it comes to run and gun that I wish it had is internal ND and one day we'll get it in a Fujifilm camera. I have not owned a camera that has had internal ND, but the little that I've used, um, external variable NDs. I don't love them. Um, there are some pretty good systems out there that are getting quicker, but yeah, I think having internal NDs on this would be amazing. When it comes to using this in music videos, live music capture environments, I think the minimal rolling shutter is really nice for kind of quick movements in between band members or performances. I know that that was a big thing that people talked about with this camera. While it does not have a global shutter, I do think the rolling shutter is drastically improved compared to the X-T3 or X-T4 or even other cameras out there that have a little bit more of that jello effect when moving really fast. So I think that's a pro. Again, the IBIS in one take style music videos that I do has been really great, has drastically reduced the need to stabilize in post. 
and I really love the 6K open gate. So I don't know if I've talked about that very much in this review yet, but a lot of artists that I'm working with are also gonna be making vertical content from whatever music video I'm producing, either for Spotify canvases or promotion on TikTok and Instagram. And so I just primarily move towards shooting um, 6.2 open gate, just because it's giving you kind of the full resolution on the sensor, um, which is really great for vertical content. You're not needing to scale the image as much in post to really fill the frame. Next, I want to talk about just my experience of using the X-H2S with a rig. In case you're wanting to do the same, you can go watch my rig video of how I built my X-H2S rig. I don't think it's perfect, but I really loved it and I've stuck with it and used it for about a year. I've really loved having the quick release feature and that was new to the X-H2S with me. Just being able to pull my camera really quickly off has definitely, um, I think, helped certain scenarios where I'm wanting to use rig or not. It's really easy to take it on and off. I think the added weight and the top handle is great for handheld filmmaking. And I've opted for using battery banks to power my camera over USB-C um, instead of V-mount. I think on my next camera, or eventually I am gonna upgrade to V-mount because I am experiencing just some of the drawbacks of battery banks kind of losing capacity over time and um, they're just a little bit of a hassle. So I've not made that jump yet, um, but I'm super close to making that upgrade. When it comes to using the X-H2S without a rig, I think it's very usable. I think all the exposure tools that they pack into the monitor, the fact that it has a flip screen, I think make it super usable. I've shot several weddings with just the camera and a lens, no monitor, um, no rig. Like I said earlier, I often shoot Super 8 film and I'm able to hold my Super 8 camera and the X-H2S in my other hand at the same time. And ergonomics feel really great. I think they did a good job of just making the camera a little bit bigger um, in my hands. It works out really well. And I think just pair it with a camera strap and you will be really good to go. Next category I just want to talk about is the flip screen. It has one. I don't vlog. Um, it's mainly nice for YouTube A-roll or sitting next to my camera during interviews. I can kind of glance over and see the screen. Um, I do wish it could flip three ways like some of the new screens coming out from Panasonic and maybe the new Sony camera um, because then you can have the monitor behind the camera and sort of flip it up so it doesn't always have to be on the side. So. Um, I think Fuji will probably do that in their next camera. I wouldn't be surprised as a lot of companies are doing the same. When it comes to the CF Express card versus SD cards, I am not sure what I initially thought about this, but I definitely have not minded CF Express. I always dual record the H.265 200 megabits per second codec. Um, this gives me fast transfers at home using my CF Express card with my reader. Um, I have this set up on my desk at home making transfers really quick, but the fact that I'm also dual recording to my SD card, that means anywhere I'm on the go, I can just pull my SD card out, go right into my laptop and I don't have to travel with the CF Express card reader. So although, yeah, I wasn't super sure what I thought about it. It hasn't bothered me. I haven't minded having both because I just keep the reader at home and always dual record. So I'm not really needing to worry about um, carrying around an extra reader. This camera can be powered via USB-C. I really love this. It's definitely my go-to for longer interviews, so I don't have to think about the camera running out of battery. Working as a one-man band, crucial for me, just, yeah, eliminate things I have to think about. And so I've opted for just getting some powerful wall bricks with some long cables so I can actually plug my cameras directly into an extension cord and power them along with my external monitor so I don't even have to worry about battery. When it comes to battery life, the X-H2S I think has gotten a lot better. It's definitely improved from the X-T3 that used the smaller batteries. I didn't own the X-T4 that used these similar batteries, but from what I've heard, it seems on par, if not better. It definitely lasts plenty fine for me. I own three batteries and just swap as needed. And like I said previously, I do power my camera with external battery banks when I'm needing to use it for longer shoots. Um, but for me, kind of personal videos when I'm going out in the evening just to capture something or go on a walk, um, I'll just take one battery. The battery in the camera usually lasts all evening and is plenty fine for me. I don't have to worry about bringing multiple batteries and swapping when I'm just wanting to capture some personal video. When it comes to color grading this footage, I feel like that's a really important thing to talk about. I would say working with the files has been amazing. There is so much data in the 10-bit 422 codec, especially when you're shooting F-Log2. 
I've primarily been grading with my LUTs, so go check those out. I'll put some before and afters on here of my grading process, but FLOG2 is a really great codec to work with and retains so much information in both the highlights and shadows. Classic Chrome for everyday things looks so nice as well and retains so much for a Rec. 709 codec. I'm always amazed, especially when I underexpose Classic Chrome, how much information I can bring back. And it's definitely my go-to for videos that just need a quicker turnaround. When it comes to things that I don't like, I just have a short list. It's no internal ND, the high base ISO of F-Log2, and the no global settings on the custom dial. I think if Fuji fixed those in their next camera, that'd be amazing. I'd probably buy it. Um, I think the image coming out of this camera is amazing and those are just a few small things that would definitely be nice to have for the price point of around 2500 bucks but uh, we will see what they come out with next some very odd issues that i've run into that i just wanted to touch on i very occasionally have had the camera freeze and i don't know if this was fixed in a firmware update but yeah just a few times when i would like turn on my camera switch to a video mode it almost just freeze the screen would freeze and even when you try to turn it off it wouldn't do anything I would have to pop out the battery. I don't know if other people have experienced that. I haven't really heard of a ton of other people talking about it, but it was a weird quirk. It was happening. Um, I haven't had it happen lately, so I'm kind of thinking that it was fixed in a firmware update, um, but I think there's always weird kind of glitches like that with the camera, and it has never happened um, after I've been using the camera for a long time. So usually, just when I've picked it up after not using it for a while, it's happened, so it's never prevented me from capturing a moment or ruined a take, um, but just thought I would mention it because it is a little bit of a weird quirk. So towards the end here, I just wanted to answer the question, is this the perfect camera? I think while this camera is amazing and I love the image coming out of it, please hear me when I say that it is not perfect for everyone, including myself. There is one reason why I will eventually sell this camera, and instead of getting into that here, I'm actually going to make a dedicated video talking about that, so stay tuned if you guys are interested in hearing more about that in my next video. Um, but overall, yeah, I think it's been an amazing tool to use. It gets me really excited about video-focused cameras from Fujifilm moving forward. I don't know if they're going to ever kind of dip their toes into the cinema camera space, but I think they would be um, a really high contender for just the market because I think the image coming out of the X-H2S, the X-H2, and the X-T5 um, are really second to none and on par with anything in its price range and I think definitely punches above its weight with even cinema camera quality. And I think that is it. There are so many things to say in a review video. This is my first one. Honestly, I was very intimidated to do a camera review. Hence the fact that I did not get to this until a year later. And so my hope is that just hearing my perspective is helpful for someone out there. If you're considering this camera in 2023 or beyond, I think I can vouch for it. The fact that I've used it in a ton of different environments, it's held up really well. And I haven't really had any issues that have changed kind of from day one until a year later. So I can definitely vouch for it being worth the $2,500 price tag. Let me know down below if you guys have any questions. I'd love to answer them down below and be a resource if there's anything that I missed or kind of glossed over. Um, definitely did not probably get to everything in this video, um, but try to get most of it. And so have a great rest of your day and until next time, peace.